So this morning I'm going to walk you through how I set up my interactive notebooks. So for most of you all who don't know me, I'm Michelle Williams, AKA the Ignited Teacher. And I help teachers of struggling students to effectively manage their classrooms and to increase their student achievement. So this is one of the engagement tools that I use in my classroom. A lot of people, you know, are straying away from paper and we have the paperless classrooms, but the interactive notebook, my students love it. They still like to cut and paste and the information tends to stick with them. So I use interactive notebooks every year, but I also keep my own interactive notebooks. I teach three sections of math, so I keep three notebooks and a little bit about the notebooks that I use. These are just Walmart notebooks and they cost about 87 cents because they're on sale right now. And I do not use composition notebooks because composition notebooks I've found in the past that the kids rip the papers out and then the notebook um, comes unbound and um, it was just a hassle and then I like these because if we don't finish something it has a pocket in the front and the kids can stick it in there they can stick papers in there or whatnot also I know some of the teachers are concerned about you know having um, the spirals what I do is I keep a pair of pliers in my classroom and um, we generally I have a um, a crate in my classroom and when my person picks up the notebooks they know to stack them this way so therefore when you have the them in the crate they're not stacked on top of one another so that's one way I get around it and it saves the wires from getting tangled so let me go ahead and get started in my store um, I have a beginning of the year starter pack. It is very genetic, generic and it's something that you can use over and over again. It doesn't, the kids fill in their information. So what I do is I have my first page. Now I use Elmer's glue for my interactive notebook, but for the students I have them use um, glue sticks for obvious reasons because it's easier and Elmer's glue will wrinkle the paper. So what I do is my first one is my interactive notebook and I have the kids cut it out. So I cut mine out. Some of you might say, well, why don't you have the kids write it? Because it just makes it easier when I'm setting up the notebook and the kids don't get confused on what line to put it on or whatnot. So I just go ahead. I made this template. I think I've been using this for about three or four years now, and it has worked out perfectly. So this goes on the first page. Now, I know you're saying, well, do they number the pages? Yes, I don't have my students number their pages until after, until after we put in the rubric. So in the packet, a rubric comes with the interactive notebook template. So the next one, is it says my interactive notebook school year kids fill in names so automatically when you open the notebook you can automatically tell whose notebook it is then i use front and back pages the next one you have either your goals for the year and your math plan 
So these can fit in here easily. So I'll just have the kids, they don't cut them out. I'll go ahead and put these in. You have to be careful because there's holes, but I think these are not covered. So just my goals for the school year, and I walk my students through goals every year. I set goals with my students. I set my own goals, and then I set goals for them. We set goals with them. Now, do the goals change? Absolutely. Uh, I don't generally set the goals until about, um, I want to say the third week of school. You know, we talk about where the children, where they are, because we do a lot of um, beginning of the year testing. So when the children actually get some data, because some of my students are in denial where they are with math. So we have to get that data to help them understand. Now, for the interactive rubric notebook, I mean, interactive notebook rubric, I definitely have them, we go over this and we talk about what each section means. So say for instance, our, they get three points. They get three out of nine points total. But I told, tell my students, this is to help them understand how their organized their um, notebooks should be look so your appearance and organization completeness and illustration and designs so I give them a notebook grade and sometimes their grades are not that great so they have to adhere to this rubric and it's not something that is I got you this is a grade that you can give them and it teaches my fifth graders I like it because by the time they leave me, they go to middle school, they know how to keep up with a notebook. So I put that in after my math plan. And we'll just stick it in there. And now you see why I like the notebook. So you go from the front as you flip my math, my goals for the school year. And then you have your rubric. So then we, the next section is, I let my students draw in on this page. And this page is basically for them. So on this page, I'll have them title it. all about me. And they get to draw things and it tells me things about them about and it, it doesn't have to be math related in regards to um, in regards to what I, they want me to know about them. So most of the kids, what are, I'm not good at math. Um, some of them will write, a, draw their siblings, but it's just a page for them to know, you know, hey, Miss Williams, this is about me. This is um, what I like, things I don't like, some things that I'm good at. So it's just a fun page for them. So then after the All About Me page, I introduced the students to my problem solving strategy. Now, the first thing that I start with is problem solving strategy at the beginning, the first week of school. And for obvious reasons, if you teach math, you know already that the kids sometimes, most of the time, struggle with problem solving. So I go ahead and introduce my problem solving strategy at the the beginning of the school year. So the kids already have it in their notebooks. This is the model part. So I have them take this and 
I actually teach a lesson with my problem solving strategy. So we'll take a problem and I'll do the read part, I'll do the draw part, and then I'll do the write part. So they'll already automatically know what the expectation is for problem solving. Uh, I know I had one principal, I used to send one problem home a night and my kids had to solve this problem. Um, but the funny thing about it is they got really, really good with problem solving. But he hated the fact that I sent one problem home a night, but the problem was problems were difficult and then some of the kids weren't getting the problems correct. So I had to stop doing that. But I'm going to try it again this year to see um, because we're doing some PBL lessons and I want my kids to be able to explain and do all the things that they need to do for PBL. So this is how I set it up. So I don't start numbering until after this problem solving. So this will be number one. And I have my students circle their um, numbers to uh, stuck together three, four, and do I make them do the whole notebook first? No, I don't. So that's how I set up my interactive notebooks. They have been working for me for a long time and my students love them. They really, really get excited about them. And then it gets to a point uh, where they um, really, rely on the notebooks. It takes them back to, and I don't have to constantly be their walking, talking notebook um, or resource. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This tutorial, if you want to know where you can purchase this um, beginning of the year um, interactive notebook package, you can go to 